Okay, we'll start with this. The rumors checked out. It's official. Jessica McCaskill will be defending her Ring Magazine and WBA title against unbeaten up-and-comer Olympian Lauren Price of the United Kingdom on a boxer show. Boxer announced that via their social media, a bit of a curveball if you're not in the loop, if you weren't. In the know, you may have been expecting Jessica to take on Ivana Habazin of Croatia, her mandatory challenger. The fight's still registered on BoxRec as Jessica's next fight, but that's not who she's going to be fighting. She's fighting Lauren, Lauren and Lauren, she's likely Lauren. fighting Lauren for a lot more money than she stood to make with Ivana, thus sacrificing the WBC title, which she did. She's not going to be on the line in this fight. This fight is only for the Ring Magazine and WBA titles. WBC title, Ivana may be elevated to full champion straight away, or the WBC BC might have her fight somebody else for it. We'll see. It's a separate matter. At this stage, and at this age, age sacrificing age. one of her alphabet titles for a bigger purse, a much bigger purse than what she stood to make with Ivana in Croatia. It's worth it. Jessica's already been a unified champion at super lightweight, an undisputed champion at welterweight. She's fought some of the best fighters anywhere in between 135 and 147. So at this stage, and at this age, it's all about the dollars. It's all about the money. The money! If all you have to do to get it a bigger bag, get a bigger purse, is give up the WBC, then so be it. You've still got the WBA, you've still got the Ring Magazine title, and lineal status. You still have a name. A name that's worth something to Lauren Price, a name that's worth something to Boxer, more than you stood to make with Ivana. You still have a name. What is a big step up in class, a big step up in competition for Lauren Price, who aspires to become a world champion in seven fights. This will be Lauren's seventh fight as a professional, just her seventh fight fighting someone like this. To put her in a situation like this in under 10 fights so early in her career, the people at Boxer, Lauren herself, they must be very confident. She's got the pedigree. Still a big step up in class, the order of the day. The order of the day for Jessica is she has to try to force Lauren to lose form while Lauren has to try and maintain it, maintain form. Can she do it? Jessica's a very awkward fighter, even as far as pressure fighters go. She's a very awkward fighter. Her come forward aggression, her volume punching, those wide shots she's messy she can make things messy which can cause an otherwise polished boxer a polished more polished fighter to start to lose form so what we've seen in the past in what was the erica farias fight at 140 erica farias was the number one super lightweight at the time she was number one when jessica fought her and beat her as well as cecilia Brakus. she was number one unbeaten at the time undisputed she was on the verge of breaking joe lewis's record for consecutive title defenses <laughs> Jessica beat them both. In truth, Jessica, a fighter of limited ability and limited form, she's made out very well for herself in spite of that limitation. Can she beat Lauren? Can Lauren beat her? Is Lauren catching her at the right time? In spite of all of Jessica's success over the years, the last two fights, it seems like Father Time is catching up to her. She lost to Chantel Cameron. That was the worst I've ever seen her. And to a lot of people, she lost or should have lost to Sandy Ryan. This is intriguing. Because here you have a fighter who's a lot more experienced as a professional than the other, but they're getting up there in age. They're getting older. Here you have a younger fighter that comes from a great amateur background, but doesn't really have much experience as a pro. She's not big on power either, Lauren Price. She's not big on firepower. She's got speed, athleticism, movement, and great fundamentals. But what she ain't got is power. Jessica's got power. Lauren doesn't. So things could get interesting mid-range to inside in the exchange because Jessica is a stronger puncher than Lauren. Albeit slower. And older. I like the fight. Boxer is doing what they have to do to ensure that their Olympic upstart makes a splash, a decent-sized splash, in the welterweight division where Sandy Ryan still holds the WBO title, Natasha Jonas. She's got the IBF. Maybe Natasha fights Ivana. What? Now that Jessica McCaskill's not fighting Ivana Habazin and now that the WBC title has gone vacant, maybe Natasha Jonas will fight Ivana for it. In a unification match. We'll see what happens. He's the uh, monster. Say that again. He's the uh, monster. He's the uh, monster. David Benavides. David Benavides, the monster. What happened to him?
being the Mexican monster. The Mexican monster. What happened to that? Did you take the Mexican out? Is it harder to sell him as the Mexican monster when he's not actually a Mexican national like Canelo, like Jaime Munguia, who he's about to fight? Is it harder to sell him as the Mexican monster when he's not a full blood Mexican and he's got some Ecuadorian in there? And that, to be honest, it, it's more than money, man. We're super happy in the position we are. We were going to make double the money fighting Munguia. Double the money fighting Munguia. When were you going to fight Munguia? Then fighting Canelo. I'm just enjoying the ride, man, because little by little, he's losing a lot of fans and everybody know, is, uh, is getting to know Canelo, the real Canelo. When is he losing fans? Where is he losing fans? He's still the highest paid boxer in the sport. He's still on the Forbes list at the top of it. For boxers? How do you imagine he got there? His fans. That's how. That he doesn't want to face the, face the uh, monster. The uh, monster? Not the Mexican monster? What happened to the Mexican part of it? Did he stop being a Mexican monster? David Benavides. And that, to be honest, it, it's more than money, man. Put on a brave face, Jose, because you have to. Pretend that everything's all right, that everything's okay. Do it. The old Canelo won't fight us, Canelo won't fight us routine. The old Canelo won't fight us marketing angle. That didn't work for Demetrius Andre. Do you think it's going to work for you? It's not. Jose says that he loves the position that they're in, the position they're in right now. But what position is that? You're going up to 175, right? For WBC interim status at 175, right? Against former champion Oleksandr Vozdik? Why? Think about the position they're in. Really think about it. You don't have any leverage over Canelo Alvarez. All you had was a WBC interim title. And I told you guys, and I told many a David Benavidez fan that being WBC interim champion, that's no leverage at all. Because the World Boxing Council is not going to strip Canelo to award David. They're not going to take the belt from Canelo to give it to David because they get more money if Canelo has that belt. Bigger sanctioning fees from his fights than David's fights. That's the position you're in. That's reality. That's why they never set a time frame. They never put a deadline on when they would order that fight. That's the position you're in. The position you're in can't be getting easier to make 168. No, it can't. Can't be getting easier, which is why you're going up to 175. You can tell the world and you can tell the media that the reason you're going up to 175 is because you're tired of waiting for Canelo Alvarez. Though underneath it all, if making 168 were easy, then you'd keep making it. You'd stay there. In the position that you're in, David Benavidez has already been at 168 for so long it can't be getting easier to make. Look at him. He's about six foot two, six foot three. What does he rehydrate to the night of a fight? What does he walk around at in between fights? At what weight? The position you're in. In the position that you're in, getting down to 168, it's not getting easier. It's getting more difficult to do. So you're going up to 175. In the position that you're in. And the most you have to show for it are a bunch of interviews where you complain that Canelo Alvarez didn't fight you. You sound like Keith Thurman. Circa 2013, 2014, 2015, you sound like he used to sound. Back when Floyd Mayweather beat Marcos Maidana for the WBA title, at that time, Keith Thurman was highly ranked in the WBA's rankings at that time. Floyd fought Marcos, won a controversial decision, then gave him a rematch, won in better fashion, then after that, he unified titles with Manny Pacquiao, but he never fought Keith. Keith came into it because Floyd won that WBA title. But Floyd never actually fought him. After becoming champion, he fought Marcos for a second time, then Manny, then Berto, then retired. Keith was carrying on about Floyd, how David and Jose are carrying on about Canelo. It's how Keith was carrying on about Floyd, how Amir Khan was carrying on about Floyd, how Antonio Margarito was carrying on about Floyd, how some people were carrying on about Paul Williams. Paulie Spartafora. Are you noticing a pattern? This is how Aaron Pryor used to carry on about Sugar Ray Leonard. What David Benavidez's team and what David Benavidez's fans don't want to accept. The position you're in. If a fight between you and Canelo doesn't materialize, it doesn't actually have any effect on his legacy. In fact, the only way you can affect his legacy is to create one of your own. In the position that you're in. You can't stop him from making money. He's going to make a fuck ton of money in this Jaime Munguia fight. You can't stop him from doing that. The day that he retires, you can't stop him from getting in the Hall of Fame, and he will. Mm -hmm. But will you? See, in the position that you're in, if you go up there to light heavyweight, yeah. and you get beat, yeah. you get exposed, yeah. you get forgotten. In the position that you're in, it's not the worst idea. It's not the worst thing in the world that you're looking at other fights with other fighters. And what heralds that 
is the Vosdick fight at 175. But, but in the position that you're in, WBC interim champion, if you win, if... Who are the champions at 175? Dimitri Bivol, who's with Matchroom. Artur Abedabib, who's with Top Rank. They're about to fight very soon. And... In the position that you're in, you said you wouldn't go to zone for Canelo Alvarez. You said you wouldn't cross the street. Your promoter, he demanded the rights to the fight. The rights to a Canelo Alvarez fight. He said they have to go to Amazon Prime. What? In the position that you're in. When Eddie Hearn reached out to you guys, Lukowicz told him the rights to the fight would have to go to Prime, which was a non-starter if Matchroom were the ones that were going to pay for it. In the position that you're in, you said you wouldn't even cross the street for Canelo. So how are you going to get the winner of Better B versus b Ball in the ring? Whoever wins, they're on other sides of the street. Dimitri's with Matchroom, Artur's with Top Rank. You wouldn't cross the street for the biggest name in boxing right now. You wouldn't cross the street for Canelo. Are you gonna cross the street for them? You might have to. You don't have any leverage over those fighters. You don't have any more leverage over them than you just had over Canelo. Go ahead. Fight Vostick. See if you can win. And if you do, and you become WBC interim champion, say that Matchroom makes you an offer on behalf of Dimitri, or say that Top Rank makes you an offer on behalf of Artur. If you don't bite, if you don't take the deal, a purse bid might ensue. The rights to the fight will go to auction. And does the PBC here and now have the money to win the rights to the fight huh? in that situation? Do they have it? Don't confuse the money they're willing to put up for Canelo with the money they're willing to put up for somebody else. Canelo's good for the money. Are they going to break the bank to bring either Dimitri Bivol or Artur Betterbeef to you in the position that you're in? Because if you're fighting for WBC interim status at light heavyweight, it's to get the winner of that fight. But they're not on your side of the street, so what are you gonna do? In the position that you're in. In the position that you're in, while your next fight is at light heavyweight, you said you wanna fight Zerto Ramirez if he beats our son Gulamarian up there at cruiserweight. He's with Golden Boy. And you didn't wanna cross over to Matchroom in the zone for Canelo. Are you gonna be willing to cross over for Zerto Ramirez? Would you go to Golden Boy? In the position that you're in, what leverage would you have over him? To bring him to you, what leverage would you have over Zerto in the position that you're in? In the position that you're in, PBC, PBC fighter, what have they got? What? Eight to ten fight dates if they're lucky? How many times are you gonna fight this year? You've gone from headlining your own shows to fighting on Gervonta Davis's undercard. Am I hearing this right? That David Benavidez versus Oleksandr Vozdik may land on the undercard of Davis versus Martin. So in the position that you're in, you're moving backwards. From headlining your own shows and your own pay-per-views to being on the undercard of someone else's. And all you have to say is Canelo didn't fight me. Canelo didn't fight me. He's ducking. Canelo Alvarez, he addressed those accusations saying, yeah, that always happens. Arislandi Lara, Austin Trout, Floyd Mayweather, Miguel Cotto, Gennady Golovkin, Daniel Jacobs, Callum Smith, Billy Joe Saunders. At the end of the day, I beat practically all of them. If I beat Benavidez, they're going to say, oh, oh, why don't you face this other guy? Look at my history. I've done everything in boxing. I've done it all. He's right. Let's say Canelo fought this guy in September after the Munguia fight. He beats Munguia. He fights David in September. He beats him too. Let's just say that for argument's sake. Right? How long do you think it'll take his critics, his detractors, to move on to the next guy? How long do you think it'll take them to pour the same energy into David Morrell? that they've been pouring into David Benavidez. How long? Not long at all. Look at Crawford. They went from saying that Terrence is ducking Errol to Terrence is ducking Boots. They went from saying Errol would destroy Terrence to Boots will destroy Terrence. Understand that a loser, loser cannot loser. put himself in the shoes of a winner. A guy who paid his dues. A guy who's done the work. And I have any number of these fucking losers like Jacob Perez. Loser! Big Benavidez fans. Big advocates for this guy. They don't seem to want to understand that arguing with me isn't going to get you anywhere. What's that going to do? What's that going to do for David and the position that he's in? The position I just described in a seven, eight minute segment? What's that going to do? You think coming here every day, what? arguing and complaining in the comment section of my videos, do you think that's going to affect no. any change? Do you think that's going to help David Benavidez? No. Help his situation, the position that he's in? It's not. Do you think that's going to stop Canelo Alvarez from making money? A fuck ton of money. 
in the Jaime Munguia fight. Do you think that's going to stop him from getting in the Hall of Fame bang, the day bang, that he bang. retires? Do you think that complaining to me and trying to argue with me? And I can only tell you what I think. That's it. And if you want to know what I think and you're here, you're here quite often. If you want to know what I think and you're here, so I'll assume that you do, Canelo Alvarez put a lot of distance between himself and everybody else. And that's because practically everybody else spent so much time focusing on him instead of focusing on themselves and their own legacies that David Benavidez already had the chance to become this division's unified champion long before Canelo Alvarez came around. Yeah. Long before he did it. 2019, you could have unified with Caleb Plant, who was right there on your side of things. You both had belts, you were both unbeaten champions, but your promoter, Samson Lukowicz, he wanted to drag it out. He dragged his feet. Only so that the following year, David could lose his title on the scales. You snooze, you lose. You dragged your feet, and you put David in that position. The position that he's in now, it's his own fault, his team's fault. You would have fought Caleb in 2019. Yeah. Maybe it wouldn't have been a pay-per-view. Maybe you wouldn't have made that much money, but you would have had two of the four major titles at this ah. weight, and a legitimate reason for Canelo Alvarez to come see you. So legitimate that it couldn't be ignored. Because you would have been a champion like him. I said it years ago, right here on this channel. Those videos are still up. I said it years ago that after Canelo's done with Sergey, he's not staying at 175. He's gonna move down and he's gonna go on a world title run. So it behooves David to not only hang on to his own title, but add to it. Fight Caleb. He didn't. Not only did he not fight Caleb, he lost his own fucking title, fucking around. Canelo comes down. Don't. The way I said he was gonna come down. He starts on his undisputed title run with Callum Smith, who was on the same side of the street as him at the time. Then Billy Joe Saunders, same deal. Then he crosses over to the PBC, beats Caleb Plant. He does all the heavy lifting. Do you understand that, you fucking losers? Does all the heavy lifting. He single-handedly unified the division in 11 months where David Benavidez was there long before Canelo even came into it. So he's gonna bow down to David now. Uh, bow down to you, because you say he's ducking David? David, who first won a title at this weight, all the way back there in 2017. Didn't unify shit. Didn't do nothing. Played it safe. We all know he played it safe the whole time he was there, waiting for the Canelo Alvarez sweepstakes. You expect me to sympathize with him. You expect Canelo. You're dreaming. Canelo can fight him. He can fight him. Or he cannot fight him. But Canelo Alvarez's legacy. He's already made history. On more than one front. The Benavidez fight don't happen. That don't change that. It's not like they told Floyd, hey Floyd, since you didn't fight Keith Thurman, you can't get in the Hall of Fame. They're not going to tell Canelo, hey Canelo, since you didn't fight David, sorry, you can't get in. It's not how this works.